Why don't you tell everybody about all of the insane people that came after you over the weekend? Yeah, let's do it. Let's just get right into it. There was a video of Olivia Rodrigo making the rounds over the weekend, going quite viral, where she is performing this, I guess, um, pop punk or Riot Girl style song that's on her new album, Guts. And in the middle of the video, she just kind of screams and not... You know, I saw people commenting about this saying like, wow, she screams, that's crazy. And I got a little excited. I was like, oh, she like actually decided to do like a real growly scream on, on one of her songs. That's kind of out there for a mainstream pop artist and somebody who came from being a Disney child star. So I clicked on the video and I was horrified because it's it's really bad. Um, you want to play it for us and we can all just adjudicate for ourselves? Let's play it. It's it's really bad, guys. Do you want to just play the end where the scream is? Uh, just play play the whole thing. Okay. Now this is fine. This is inoffensive. Women's, women's swearing is cringe. It's also not edgy. Women? Because we come to expect it at this point. So, like, what are you bringing to the table creatively that we haven't seen before? I know it's sexist, but women w women swearing to be edgy is cringe. <laughs> it, it is, it is. Now, when I swear, it's because I just, like, feel it bubbling up in the rage inside me, and I can't help it. It's it's like when they add, it, it's like the, the it's like the pure lyrics, it's, like, it's like the pure effing hubris line from Star Trek Discovery. It's cringe. It's done to make themselves edgy. <laughs> it doesn't work. Yeah, it, when it's in song lyrics, honestly, anybody's song lyrics these days. I just it seems like you couldn't come up with a way to creatively like make that work, so, like syllables wise. Yeah. So you just added in an expletive because you couldn't think of something else. But the worst part about that video obviously was the clean scream that she did when she could have actually gone the whole way through and and done like a growly scream and learned how to do that. Yeah. That would have been a cool addition to the song and like wouldn't just sound like a 12 year old. She's very mad at her dad for taking mad, her phone yeah, away. Who's mad at her dad for, for taking like taking away. TikTok away. Give me my phone back. Ah! Also, everyone <laughs> everyone defending this and like claiming it's the, the gaggiest serve of all time is uh, comparing her a lot to wait, Haley wait. Williams from Paramore and Avril Lavigne. And I decided to repost this video and my say- My guess is if you looked up gaggiest serve of all time, <laughs> you wouldn't get good find, results on the internet. Well, you Don't look up gaggiest serve of all time. Brett, Contrary to what you think, it would come up with like drag race, like RuPaul's drag race. But um, she gets, you know, as a compliment compared to Haley Williams and Avril Lavigne a lot. And I reposted the video and said, this is supposed to be Gen Z's Haley Williams or Avril Lavigne. There's truly no hope. <laughs> you're very judgment. You're very critical. <laughs> and people were pissed. And everyone was pissed and saying like, um, actually, she's allowed to be her own person, and you're just obsessed with hating everything she does. And they have were you ever, also... Have you ever tweeted about Olivia never. Rodrigo before? This is the first and only time I have ever tweeted about Olivia Rodrigo in my life. So, some of the quote tweets, which got a lot of retweets, 
said, I don't know. I just think she's proof that people will always hate young women and their interests for the rest of time. Because, good Lord, the amount of hate I've seen about this album is weird. You know what it is? Is it weird, really, to be, like, one of the most popular mainstream artists and get criticism? Hot Rod is right. Joan Jett, she ain't. Um... It's, right, um, and then there are also people claiming, well, you know, Avril Lavigne was never good, so you just don't realize that Avril Lavigne was also cringe in her own time and her music sucked. Like, don't go there. Why is it Don't that start there. One of the problems is that people that especially stands, when you don't like, uh, and I, I'm not trying to be judgmental of, of, of uh, stands of the ladies here, but whenever, the, maybe it's part of feminism, but it's like whenever you criticize a woman for something like this, they then extrapolate it to all women, all things. Like, you don't like this right. woman scream, therefore you don't like any woman that's ever screamed ever in your entire life. Which is not and true. And most men have liked at least one woman that has screamed in their entire life, I can imagine. Especially if they're married. Sure. So, you know, that's just the way it is. And it just feels like they're always looking for that large-scale statement that's not actually accurate, but it's a doomer take that's very, very depressing. They're just, like, super coping about this rather than just enjoying the music that they claim they love so much. The, like, this other quote tweet said... This is extremely Avril Lavigne. I'm sorry that your nostalgia goggles have covered up how cringe Avril was at the height of her popularity, but I was there and it was exactly like this and it was effing awesome. It, I don't think it was. Like, yes, Avril had her cringe moments. There was that infamous video where she was like, I'm a rock chick. I'm I'm a rock chick. Wait, what was the other one? The other, the other one that you showed me the video of the one time about skateboarding or something like that? I don't know what that oh, was. Oh, I, but, I mean, yeah, she had her cringe moments, but like, yeah. she also was legitimately a teenager then, and Olivia Rodrigo is 20. Not for nothing. Yeah. And I'm about two and a half years older than this girl, and people are claiming, they're like insisting that I must be a millennial because I dislike her music. If I were truly Gen Z, then I would love her music, and I would be all in. But this, that's not the case. This tweet like, has has nine, 14 million views. Which tweet? Mine? Yes. Yeah. And then some of the people replying to me are, have even more. Um, but, like, they're claiming that, you know, millennials are the ones tearing this girl down and criticizing everything she does. They're obsessed with her. They shouldn't be comparing her to any other female artists. It's sexist and misogynist and blah, blah, blah. And also racist, too, because she has the minority card on her side. Um, but, like, I'm literally Gen Z, and it doesn't appeal to me. Yeah. <laughs> well, it also makes it seem like that is that mean that Gen Z is supposed to be a monolith? That right. just because you're exactly. Gen Z means you have to like it? When, if you think about it, millennials were extremely polarized in their subcultures and, and what their different sub subcultures were loyal to well, and he, liked. And here's the thing, like, the, the, the it, beauty like, of to being... to the extremes. The beauty of being a nerd... Like, it's like when people argue about DC and Marvel... Uh, like back in the day before, before Stan Twitter, before the internet kind of like before the internet became mainstream and you had to go and you had to actually seek out message boards to argue with people. It was done in way more good faith. Cause you understood that that person had to work as hard to be there as you did. <laughs> so you, there was a little bit more like baseline respect for the person or well, like who would, who would win in a fight, uh, Batman or Superman, uh, blah, 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 right. And then they have to go back and forth. Um, ooh, somebody points out, yeah, the, the, the lady from Flyleaf does have a better scream. She does. Mm -hmm. That's some real talent right there. It's just, look at this. This isn't even close. Nope. Like, it's not, it's not giving what it was supposed to give. So just do your own thing. And she's also <coughs> been accused of, of being extremely derivative and almost copying other female artists. Like, she's literally gotten in lawsuits every time she puts a song out. I saw that. Miley oh. Cyrus, Taylor Swift with uh, Haley Williams, a uh, bunch of different artists where like there's clear similarity there and she feels very manufactured in her public image. Mm, I'm not buying it. I'm really not buying it. Um, a $20 one there from Francisco Sanchez Jr. It says, never forget Rodrigo's trip in the, the White House. Wait, what? Uh, never forget. In Rod white, oh, yeah. in white platform shoes to talk to us about COVID. She's a paid shell. Yeah, no, that was another conversation that was going on on Twitter this weekend is like, 
Olivia Rodrigo should use her platform to be a political activist. She's not doing enough. And then all her stands were bringing that up, how she went to the White House to, like, talk about how you should get vaccinated and how she's, like, you know, she's actually a WOC of color and actually supports BLM and actually is blah, blah, blah. Like, listing out all these things as if that makes her look good. Yeah. It just means that she's extremely corporate approved and isn't introducing anything new creatively. Right? Yeah. It's, um... <laughs> There's no resistance or rebellion or actual creativity in this video. This is a copycat of what we've already seen. I mean, it's it's where things were always going to go. The moment that they started putting Nirvana shirts in Target and uh, and all of these things that were once not mainstream. It's like when somebody pointed out, um, somebody said like Eminem finally, like on one of our videos said like Eminem finally sold out. I'm like, he, it, he was being played on the radio. He was on MTV just sure. because he actually was counterculture, but that's because at that counter time... Counterculture was the culture, though. But yeah, at that time, we were in a neoconservative America where liberalism actually was still somewhat counterculture, so you were seeing it on mainstream networks, right? Now, liberalism is the case du jour, and that's the mainstream. So this is not... There is no counterculture on the left or yeah. on on political left or or entertainment left so it's weird to see people point that out i'm like no you were just counterculture back then because you were likely you know a, a basic li you know a basic liberal and it's in a society that was far more neoconservative and mm -hmm. and still at the time somewhat religious more so than it is today yeah. so yeah and in this poor lady oh somebody says uh you too is oh the, they were talking about you too so yeah all these bands right that sold out, uh, which is fine, make your money, I don't care. But it's when they sell out and then try to pretend like they're also still some type of countercultural yes. movement. Rage Against the Machine being a, a fantastic example, Yeah. right? I guess, but they've been pretty open and honest about sit, talking about how like they use their capitalist mode as, like a, as, a, as their way of promoting revolution. <laughs> Yeah. Just that proving really once again how well capitalism actually works. A lot of cognitive dissonance there. Uh, so um, what do you do? You, do you, <laughs> some, so some more of these quote tweets um, are really showing that Gen Z has some resentment toward millennials. Um, one said millennials really becoming the villain they swore they never would be. Like, what is this? Did you think that all millennials like swore it, like an oath or some kind of blood pact? No. To not become their parents, vi like villains, like their boomer parents. Um, I mean, that, okay, there, there's a fair argument to says, me that that sentiment has. It was kind of like what I was saying earlier, talking with Andy and Lydia, right? It's like there is the sentiment in our generation, but I think that that grew not when we were kids, but we were in, when we were in our late twenties, when we saw, you know, the ho after the housing market collapse after the banks got bailed out. Then, you know, you're out of high school, you're in your early 20s. By the time the repercussions of that showed their true face years later, NSA scandals and stuff coming out during the Obama administration, then you start thinking like, you know, we're not going to bail the banks out like our parents. We're not going to be the surveillance state like our parents. But we were already closing in on late 20s by that point. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Another one said something about millennials only being capable of understanding artists within their familiar framework of what they had when they were kids doesn't bode well for their chances to not end up exactly like their boomer parents. Uh, life is going to be life and you're going to end up uh, being just as cringy as your parents Yo, one day. Who's going to tell them that? I was born in 2000 and Olivia was born in 2002. Yeah, my favorite one here. Says, Who's going to tell them? Every, uh, so this, I don't think they want to know. It says, every generation feels disgust with the music of their children. The music of their children reveals the pain caused by the mistakes of their parents. That's you, Mary. Olivia Rodrigo's Wait, parents. Sorry, I didn't grow up with Avril Lavigne. I did not grow up with Paramore. Rather than own that, it's easier to blame the music, blame the kids. <laughs> said this has racist undertones mad because instead of a blonde white woman making punk rock it's a filipina did you say that no no, no obviously not. not that's pr that's that's and she weapons could, grade projection okay maybe not to some people but on first glance most people looking at this video would see a white girl 
she looks like a white girl. Yeah, I'm I sorry. Didn't, I didn't know like that she wasn't. She's not a WOC of color. Listen, guys, just accept that you're going to be cringe one day. I've accepted it. You, <laughs> it's better if you accept it. Every day on here, I come in here and I don't just embrace the cringe. I am the cringe. I I I I I am the I am the fire you were of cringe. Born in it. I was I was born in it, much like Bane. Uh, I've accepted. <laughs> There's a twenty dollar one there from Crispy Leg Transport LLC. Slim Shady was the king of calling gay men the F word. Well, yes, he, was he was the king of calling everyone, not just gay men, the F word. Yeah, he was. Uh, I listened to drug indiscriminately the calling people slurs. I love uh, I love old Eminem so much. So <laughs> not just that, but also like big, yeah, like stuff from that time period. He I would love it. never today. No, he well because he's he's the establishment now because he became the establishment because what he what, what was once counterculture is now endorsed by the man. I appreciate that Taylor Swift doesn't fight against the perception that she's mainstream. You yeah. know, yeah. Whereas people like Billie Eilish or Olivia Rodrigo or a lot of these younger artists, they really want to be perceived as subversive and they're not. It's yeah. not working. No. And Taylor Swift just unabashedly embraces being the machine, you know, yeah. like being a whole corporate identity. And I don't think it really compromises the value of her work. They're also too... Um... Well, yeah, like people that embrace the, the mainstream who are just what they are, it's fine. Like, uh, what would be a movie example of this? Like, uh, uh, it's kind of like, guys, what would you consider to be a movie that people, it's kind of like A24. A20, yes. It's oh, a, a, don't even get a me started. It's, it's so it's so artsy. Ooh, it's so not mainstream. It's literally just it's, it's, Marvel, but for art like it's nerds art, you know it's, like it's, it's a 24 it's blumhouse they're all like they're still ending up at the theaters yes on a smaller scale oh. but it's still mainstream it's still mainstream in every way shape or form uh and taylor swift just embraces it it would be like if john wick tried to pretend to be art like Thank just you. art right and oddly enough john wick is more artistic than most of the stuff that's super try hard yes but it's still mainstream yeah <laughs> James Brighter says A24 is the new Miramax. Ah! <laughs> uh, somebody needs to make a t-shirt out of that. Um, but yeah, just it, it, admit that you're part of the, the mainstream. It's fine. They, they're too big to know what the counterculture would be anyway. It would be like saying to Billie Eilish, like, do you know who Tom McDonald is? I don't think she knows who Tom McDonald is. I think that um, Lana Del Rey has done a really good job of still like remaining under the glass ceiling. <laughs> but, I mean, but barely. In a certain she's, way. She's still mainstream. She she is mainstream, but she's kind of fucking irrelevant now. Like, no one really cares what she's doing. And no one is listening to the, her new music at all for years now. Yeah. And that's kind of like the, the sweet spot where you want to be. Yeah. Because the people who do care what you're doing are keeping up with you. And the people who don't care aren't looking and aren't hating. So... Yeah, I think I think she's like found her happy place. And it's a good place to be because once you found your dedicated fan base, you can stick there forever as long as tons you of money off of keep it. making as long as you keep making products that they want to buy. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye guys.